It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day. Hey, yo, what up, what up? This your boy, Jay Jones, and I'm one of your hosts here at Neighborhood Talk. And I'm your other host, Mocha on the Block. Hey, yo, Mocha, how you feeling over there tonight? Hey, I'm feeling real good tonight. How you doing? I'm hyped, man. I'm turned, man. I feel, I don't know. It's a vibe tonight, man. I, you know, it's been a great win, or whatever day it is. I don't even know what day it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are nice. going to be here. <laughs> here at Neighborhood Talk, man. We want to welcome all of our listeners and our supporters around the world. Hey, but allow us to introduce ourselves. We said it once before, we'll say it again. We're the newest, littest, and we're the soon to be most influential Web3 platform to exist anywhere. Yes, agreed. And if you're new to our space and eager to learn more about our NFT gaming project, feel free to click the link in our bio or simply check out our Get to Know Us slide that's being displayed above right now on the Jamotron, as we like to call it. And we're also doing a littest in-show in giveaway. Sorry about that. All you need to know, all you need to do is retweet our Twitter space right now and you're qualified for our in-show giveaway. And tonight is going to be something special and something that you can use within our Liberty Owl ecosystem. So this isn't just some some regular NFT. This is something you can actually utilize. Come on, talk about a utility, utility. Yeah, appreciate that, Mocha. Yo, not only is this our space to display our latest projects such as Neighborhood Tales, as Mocha just described, but, you know, how we get down to here and Neighborhood Talk, we like to be a part of the neighborhood. We like to share our space with the, the dopest guests, and tonight happens to be no exception. Mocha, hey, let our neighbors know around the world who we have the privilege of hosting tonight. My pleasure, man. Tonight we have Turnt Man Jimmy, so please let the people know where you're from, man. Hey, turn up. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Thank you for showing up. Uh, I'm Turnt Man Jimmy. I'm from South Carolina. Have a background in like IT and network infrastructure, and but um, but you know, I'm jumping jumping into Web three and you know, learning more about like developing and um and stuff like that. So, love it. All right, now appreciate you being on our platform here, Turnt Man. Hey, you know, I got to ask you first question, man. I'm get it out the way because I'm I'm curious. How did you come up with the name Turnt Man Jimmy? Talk to us about that, man. Man, yo, it goes way back to, you know, um, the, actually the homies, they're actually in the space right now. You look at EMP, the artist, uh, Don Pedro, and uh, Young Shots down there. Uh, whenever we was coming up and shit, uh, we used to, you know, um, we used to, like, you know, drink, throw parties, go back and forth to different colleges and whatnot. And, you know, and um, and I would go by, like, you know, like, turns or, like, two turn, something like that. Right? And um, we used to call everybody Jimmy, like, like you know, because you, know, you had a party, you know, people start flooding in there. And you don't know who they are. So we just start calling people Jimmy, like, hey, bro, what's up, Jimmy, and stuff like that. So then, you know, as I got older, you know, I just kept remembering those times and shit. And so I was like, man, turn man Jimmy. I was like, yo, that sounds hot. Yo, yeah, it's fire, bro. You got to tell that story. Like, more people more people got to hear that story, man. <laughs> yeah, of all names. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, yeah, and then, like, we started on, um, we tried to figure out, like, where Jimmy came from. Cause, you know, it just happened one day. And then we started thinking about it, and we thought back like Degrassi. Y'all remember that Drake was on Degrassi? And he was right. wheelchair Jimmy and whatnot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. Oh, shoot. I thought something was wrong with my uh, mic. But uh, also, how did you get into the Web3 space? I know that you said that you came from, like, networking and, and cybersecurity or IT. Um, how did you get into Web3? What enticed you? Well, um, like most people on Loop Ringling Player 2 and that um, they're part of the GameStop NFC community, you know, I started out aping into GameStop, um, AMC and stuff like that. And, you know, I made some pretty good gains on it. And uh, when I made those gains, I was like, dang, where can I move them over to and try to, you know, keep recouping it? You know, I didn't like the fact whenever they turned off the button where, you know, you couldn't buy no more. So whenever that happened, I was like, dang, you know, crypto's open 24-7. So I moved over to crypto and I got into Decentraland. Um, I got in there like 15 cents. And uh, rode the wave up to about three dollars, and you know, kind of exited out along the way. And uh, after doing that, you know, I just kind of stuck with it, and I just kept like I would be in the Xbox party chat, not even playing the game, just over there like trading coins, you know, like Sheev and stuff like that. 
And then um, one day made NFTs on Polygon and uh, didn't really have a lot of traction. So, I mean, I kind of like stepped back, but I didn't know much about it then. You know, like all my NFTs on there, they didn't have any traits, no rarity or anything like that. And they're just like pictures of me with like different filters, or, like pictures of the homies that I edited and stuff like that. Cool. All right. So, so like you, you, you mentioned term man, like, NFTs, you, you really didn't have a background. You just hopped into it or like, cause I'm, I'm just thinking about like for some of our neighbors that might hear this show that have no idea to how, how to even start. Right. It sounds like you had an organic start. Like, w- would you say, you know, that this is something that, you know, anybody without a background can, can get into? 100% man. I mean, you can jump in here at any point in time, as long as you have a good personality and you can be yourself and you understand how to talk to people then, I mean, you can jump into this space and you can do something. You know, there's more things than even just being a creator. If you're not really, you know, that artistic or you don't have, like, a vision of something you want to see, you know, you can be a space host, you can be an influencer, you can be a shiller. You know, there's all different kinds of venues where everybody can, you know, reap some kind of benefit in Web3. In Web Come on, talk about it, man, for sure. All right, you mentioned spaces. I got to ask you about it. You know, talk to us about the two of the spaces that you've been a part of. And then, you know, what's been your favorite thing about hosting the, the spaces that you've been a part of? Oh, yeah. You know, um, well, what I like about it is, you know, getting to meet new people and also um, getting to talk more, you know, and get letting the community kind of like hear who I am. You know, if they hear a voice, now they can put a voice to the face of these Jimmies, you know, that I'm creating. You know, they can be like, oh, man, well, you know, that's what that's who he is. And, you know, it builds a more personalized relationship with them. That's true. Um, where do you see the future of Twitter spaces? Man, I see it as on um, one of the best platforms for like, you know, news, depending on what communities that you're in. Because, you know, if you're in a layer one community or if you're in a loop ring layer two community, there's going to be a space up normally or anywhere in Web3. There's a space up about something. Um, even um, if you're in like football, there's spaces for that, you know. So, I mean, I think it's going to be really versatile and it's going to be something that's probably even better than the radio. I can agree with that. Same. All right. So, like, so you would say five years from now, Twitter spaces look like what, in your opinion? Uh, I would say they look like, you know, um, kind of like your radio shows, like your podcasts and stuff like that. I think they'll be more so, you know, at least simul streamed or simulcasted at the same time in Twitter spaces because, you know, everybody's just going to have access to it a lot quicker. And I feel like a lot more people are going to, you know, get on board with it and start joining them. I um I can see that because uh, Clubhouse was the craze, well, was the new rave back then, especially during pandemic. But I feel like, uh, Clubhouse was too like on its own. You have to download an app and everything. But a lot of people like Twitter because they see Black Twitter for one, uh, going crazy on whatever. Um, and a lot of people get news from Twitter. So I can see Twitter Spaces going above and beyond to like procure a new audience and a new type. And it might just get even better. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I. Because, like, I'll know something that's happened on Twitter. Like, whenever the FTX crash happened, you know, I saw it on Twitter, and my wife told me about it two days later because she saw it on Facebook and, you know, like, mainstream media. You know, but I already knew about it. I was already talking about it. She's like, how did you know so fast? I was like, Twitter. You're going to know everything instantly. You can't hide from it. You better talk about it. Love that. Love that. All right, so you mentioned FTX. You know, crypto-wise, FTX, you know, everybody knows about what happened. How do you think that affected the market, in, in your opinion? Uh, it put a lot of FUD out there. You know, a lot of people got scared. Um, a lot of people lost, like, big bags, too. I mean, you think about, like, you know, all the money Tom Brady and his wife put into it. They put a lot of their $400 million estate into it. And then all that money just disappeared overnight, you know. So that that was really, like, a dark spot on crypto. And, you know, it's really um, concerning for some people. But, you know, at the same time, though, I mean, crypto is crypto and, um, you know, everything that's on the blockchain the right way and isn't a sex. Like if it's a DEX instead, then you're not going to have that issue. I mean, as long as you look at the contract and you make sure the contract's audited and you do your due diligence, you're just fine. So it's just more. It just means that we got to get more decentralized and we need to do it sooner rather than later. I also think that um, you talked about like auditing the contracts and things. I think there is a lack of knowledge amongst people to like even know what to look for on a contract. Cause um, I know you can look at the ETH contract and things like that, but I do think there do need to be a bridge to teach everyday people about it. Like 
what to look out for in a smart contract to see like, hey, do the developers own, can they get into your wallet and take everything out? Because there can be a special code for that, but not your everyday person would know. So exactly and um that's part of the reason why um we went and we decided to actually form a team of uh, me and my brothers down there and my wife uh you'll see her, her name's turnt wife lady can't miss it but um we decided to build up a team and we wanted to do educational stuff and also do onboarding inside of our community you know because there's a lot of people that just don't know about or either they're scared of web3 and they're scared of crypto because of you know all the negative things that get said in the media about it but if you go out there and you teach them the right way about like you know these um counterfactual wallets uh, things that are trustless and understanding like, you know, this code and stuff like that, it's going to help out a lot, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, on the, on the topic of crypto and, you know, exchanges, you know, the CB, you know, central bank digital currency that's coming out, right. It's something that's um, in the mainstream, the mainstream media is talking about it. Talk to us about how you think that would affect the market. Would it, would it, will it affect it positively or, or negatively? What's your thoughts? Um, it, honestly, to me, it depends on the route they go with it. Um, if they strictly just do a stable coin, I don't see how it could affect anything because our dollars are digital already anyways. You know, we're all using debit cards. We're using Apple Pay and everything else. You know, we're not really holding physical dollars anymore. So, I mean, I don't see how it could affect anything if they only did stable coins. But if they start trying to get weird and, you know, build like a centralized blockchain, then I don't know how that's going to go. You know, <laughs> that might go real left. That's true. <laughs> I've been thinking about that too. So, um, also, I did some digging on your profile. Can you tell us a little bit about Creature Coins? Oh, yeah. The Creature Coins actually are a collab with the homie CEO Choice. Um, he, he makes 3D artwork and, a and AR augmented reality stuff um, over in our community, of the Loopering community. And uh, me and him, we did a collab together. My main collection, or what I call my baby, is the Interdimensional Saga. And um, through it, I tell a story about um, this person. I'm not going to say who it is because it'll spoil it. But a person set off something called the Reality Bomb. And whenever it detonated, it caused space and time to melt into each other. And so now you have these different dimensions that, um, that are in peril. You know, There's these different characters like samurais, sorcerers, and stuff like that. They're trying to fight and figure out what happened and who did this and how to go on. Well, um, I did a spinoff called uh, Inter Interdimensional Creatures, where it was own collection by itself. And right whenever I did it, me and Choice started, you know, talking back and forth a little bit, trying to, you know, get to know each other. And it just kind of happened organically. He said he would do it for me. Or he would make a um, make a coin. He got good at it. And so we ended up making the coin. And I said, you know, hey, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to end up using these in the future because, I mean, I didn't want to say, you know, I'm definitely going to do this with them because I had no idea what was going to happen. And um, recently I went back and I snapshotted the interdimensional saga, my first collection. And um, I found out I have 249 unique holders that are just holding it. And there's only one piece listed on Loop Exchange on our marketplace. And I was like, wow, man, that, that's really cool to me. I want to reward them. So um, I made a one of one collection called Interdimensional Samurais and uh did an airdrop sent it out to them and then um i'm holding the rest of them i've been giving them away here and there sold a couple of them but um basically holding the samurai and the creature coin um it, it actually gets you an upgraded samurai out of 151 of the 151 unique animated samurai and um so right now we're working on getting the creature coins out but it was one of those organic collabs you know we wanted to go back and uh actually use it you know give it some utility love that that's right. I like love. I love that as well. You know, I'm I'm with Mocha. We like to uh, do a little bit of digging on our on our guests, and I did notice that you, you know, the inner 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 interdimensional. I'm sorry, my apologies. Sam Grant Project. Uh, you know, you mentioned it, but tell to us a little bit more about what it is and how people can learn more about it. Yeah, most definitely, man. So, um, the interdimensional samurai is a spinoff from my main collection, the interdimensional saga. And um, basically, there's two pieces in there. There's one called Interdimensional Stone Jimmy, and then there's another one called Interdimensional Creature Number One. Well, um, basically, Stone Jimmy goes through a portal, and he doesn't know what he's going to see. And whenever he comes out of that portal, he finds a creature there. And um, actually, when I released that creature, I put it to the community on, in a poll, and I was like, is it friendly or is it a foe? And they said it was friendly. So I used that information, and I wrote the description inside there of Interdimensional Samurai, 
um, made it fit right into the story there. So that whole collection fits in between those two pieces of the interdimensional saga. It's the first direct tie into the story. Nice. So, um, what are some of the Web2 projects out there that you are most excited about making their stamp, their stamp into Web3 also? Man, you see, I'd be wrong if I didn't just, you know, go ahead and say that my favorite one is already here, and that's GameStop, you know, the release of their marketplace, the partnership with Immutable. You know, I mean, I can't really, I can't think of anything better than that right now. Um, and also, you know, um, different games of uh, getting into, like, uh, contracts like Nike and, like, Samsung, like Kiraverse, for example. Uh, they have partnerships with Samsung, Nike, you know, a list of others, too. And, you know, that's really good to have these brick-and-mortar or these 2.0 companies actually come into the space because that only does more to, you know, prove its integrity and prove that it's really something that's real and it's here to stay. All right, so, you know, there's this big thing, right, about Web 2 and Web 3, the integration of it. Would you say that, you know, whoever does it the best would be, like, at the, the standard of, you know, will be a standard in this space, right? What's your thoughts on on Web two and Web three integration? You got to make sure that you do it right. You know, you don't want to um, you don't want to just jump out there like you you feel like you're rushed to do it. You know, um, I, I remember I used to feel that way a lot. I used to feel like I was um, rushed to create artwork or you know rushed to bring like my talent over to here. And um, a lot of times when I rushed, I would miss something simple. You know, a little typo in a description. Or, you know, something like that. And it's just, you know, those things get frustrating. So, I mean, um, for like a big company, they would really want to make sure they think about it and they execute it the right way. You know, you don't want to partner with a project that's going to rug. So, you got to be real careful about it. What's the co- <laughs> yeah, we're talking about it right now. What's the, I mean, what's a company that you would like to see, right? That's that's not, that hasn't put their stamp in Web3. That's currently in Web2. You talked about GameStop, but do you, you know any... Would you say there's any, some more that you're looking forward to? Man, I, I would definitely say, like, you know, um, some more like Nike, like something official from Nike in Web3 would be real cool. Um, even, like, New Era with the hats, because, you know, I'm big on my fitted caps, uh, you know, stuff like that. Like, being able to have, like, a COA with it. Like, you know, let's say you go get a pair of rare Jordans, right? Well, now you have an NFT to certify your rare Jordans as well, too. You know, and that way you can use them as like a usable asset in like, you know, the metaverse and stuff like that, you know, put them on and shit like that. Yeah, I can see that because um, I think Coach I, I think Coach and Louis Vuitton kind of do the same thing. I, I'm yeah. more curious to, to know your thoughts as well, you know, turn man on like the digital concept. You talk about Nike and what they're trying to do with their projects and I mean how how, how do you see you know the digital the, the, the you know the fi- Digital project projects coming about is that something that's going to last long? I think it could. I mean, especially if you know if you have the physical asset too. So like, if you go up there and let's say you go to your Foot Locker and you know you buy your Nike or you buy like these limited Jordans and then you go and you scan your QR code and it gives you an NFT to your ETH wallet, you know, and then that NFT is actually you know an OBJ file or something like that that can go and go across different games or you can use it to mod your own characters. And then you can use it yourself and have, you know, the commercial rights to it as well. Stuff like that, like digital ownership is what I think is really going to help people. Yeah, I mean, now it's going to help these brands, too, because they're going to get more exposure because more people is going to want to do it. You know, I'd be a lot more enticed to go buy a $500 pair of J's if I had the money. Right. If I'm going to get the utility to be able to put it into my artwork and be able to sell it as well, too. Yeah, uh, what I was saying yeah, earlier. Can dope. y'all hear me? That's dope. Can y'all hear me? All right, man. Well, y'all know how we come here at okay. Neighborhood Talk. I can't all JD, man. I don't think JD can yeah, hear me. Sorry, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Can you hear me, JD? Uh, Mocha was talking. I don't think you can hear. Nope, I yeah. can't. That's, that's my apologies. <laughs> okay, what I was going to say earlier was that um, was that how that is how Coach and, like, I believe – Louis Vuitton works like if you buy one in their purses you get like a card or some type of certification that like you did purchase their handbag um I know in my coach bags like it it comes printed like on the label on it so it would be nice like if luxury brands can possibly come out there too because you know there are a lot of knockoffs 
um, that some people just don't know are knockoffs. So maybe luxury brands can come in there too. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, I look at NFTs like as being the future, as being like a a certificate of authenticity, like I said before, you know, it's some way that you can verify that, you know, this is a real real asset or um, and stuff like that, you know. Uh, especially with like, you know, concert tickets. You imagine how easy it would be to like get through the door of a concert says you get a ticket if you just had an NFT and they just had to, you know, do a read only transaction on your wallet instead of like you having like have to go through your email, pull it up and stuff like that. Just do a read only transaction on your wallet and they immediately know if you have the NFT or not. There's no way of faking it. True story. Cause that's um also how this one company does. It's called Credly. And it's how they ensure that someone has the, has the credentials that they say they do, such as like their degree or like um, say that you did security plus or different IT certification um, that works hand in hand. And I can see them easily transitioning to Web3 using digital signatures or whatever they will. Most definitely. I mean, it makes everything so much easier, you know. And I mean, it makes it where it's so verifiable. The blockchain does not lie. You can't spoof it. There's nothing you can do to go in there and make it look like something that it isn't. You know, those transactions are there and you're going to see each block, each hash. You know, if you want to go digging for it, you can go and find it. True story. Now, I think we have a giveaway that we're about to go uh, about to do. So Loud up, my home. Hey, check your mic, check your mic. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, 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 okay. It's giveaway time. We are going to give away one key for Ashad Mahara. Ashad Mahara is one of the fastest vehicles that we have tweaked in Liberty Isle. Uh... You're going to love it. So I need Mocha, Mocha, Mocha. Let me get a number between 1 and 18. 1 and 18 for the Shah Mahar giveaway. Let's do nine. Turn up. AMP, the artist. Ah! EMP, the artist. Congratulations. You are the winner of the Shah Mahar key. Make sure you jump in that Discord. Make sure you shoot us over your Ethereum wallet address, and you will be activated in under 24 hours. We appreciate you for tuning in with us. We love you. Welcome to the neighborhood. More horns, and it's back to J.D. and Mocha. Let's go. You better talk about it. All right, y'all. So um, I want to transition us to the second portion of our neighborhood talk, which is called Capra Fact. And basically, I ask you a series of questions and you respond Capra Fact. So the first one is blockchain technology is just a phase. Cap. Cap. That's why. Uh, Man, the reason why is because blockchain is just it's going to be the future of everything. It's the future of our voting. You know, you can't if you have voting on blockchain, you're going to be able to see that every vote's there. Each American has a wallet or each person in their country has a wallet. Um, DAOs, like the things that they can bring, a decentralized autonomous organization that runs off its people who just go in there and vote. As long as you vote by staking and earning money, then you can decide the motion or the movement or the protocol or project. Like, ain't no way that's going anywhere anytime soon. No, that's facts. All right, so next Capra Fat question for you here, Term Man, is that NFTs are here to stay Capra Fat. Fat, not going anywhere. All right, now you got to tell us at least one use case on why. <laughs> All right, the reason why is because just like, you know, with the Alice Project, NFTs are the future of gaming, being able to own your own asset. So, like, right there, that's the first way to get into it, you know. Um, and I think that's going to be one of the biggest things to happen to the market. I feel like it, once um, blockchain gaming takes hold and it becomes mainstream, look out because it's going to be pushing the same kind of market cap as what the stock exchange has. Shout out to Neighborhood Tales, y'all. Love it. Um, so, Web 2 and Web 3 integration doesn't matter. Cap effect. Nah, that, uh, you said that it doesn't matter? 
Yeah. No, nah, that, that's cap because you definitely got to get some of that. You definitely got to get some Web 2 and Web 3 mixing together. I'm not saying that Web 3 would be doomed if Web 2.0 didn't integrate or didn't get on board and become mainstream. I'm just saying for it to move forward and for us to progress and for everybody to grow the way that we want to, we're going to want to get some of those bigger Web 2.0 companies over here, too, to go ahead and make it mainstream so it's easier to onboard you know, people in our own communities as we're pushing for it. I can agree with that. And plus, like, I can see, well, it's not necessarily Web3, but you see with, like, chat GPT that everybody keeps talking about. So I think AI and blockchain, um, things like that would all come hand in hand because if you're not using one, you're using the other, um, such as, like, AR and LR and things of that nature because cars these days use all of that technology anyway. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, the the real cool thing, right? So, um, I, I actually just started working with AI more in my artwork. Like the um, the interdimensional samurais, those characters are done with AI. The backgrounds are done separately with AI. Um, and I go in and I edit them. You know, I'll draw on top of them. I'll kind of like um, I'll um, do different things to them and stuff like that. And I like record time lapses. I say that to say how scary this junk has gotten in the time that I've messed with it. So my PFP right now. It looks like it's a solid picture of me. Any of them boys down there that know me and my wife will tell you that looks just like me, but that is not me. That is literally AI's representation of me. I trained it on 30 pictures of me, and AI spit that out. And it creeps me out how much it looks like me because I look at these, and I see me, but I don't see my life behind the eyes, you know? Yo, that's mm -hmm. wild because, like, I did look at your collection. I was like, dang, he really put his face up here like that, like, it's your whole face and it's come to find out that it's actually AI. So that's like, that's wild as hell. Yeah. It's crazy. Like when I, when I figured it out and I started messing with it, bro, I, I was just, you know, I was really excited about it. I was like, man, this is really cool. And, um, you know, I was already making jimmies before I initially jumped into polygon making jimmies also, you know, that's what I called them whenever I was doing like the photos with filters and whatnot. But um, now since I started doing the AI, it's like I'm getting some things I might be able to rig or, you know, um, be able to turn into like a meta human or something like that and get it like game ready. So it's real cool. Love that, love that. All right. All right. Turn, man, we got the final cap of fat question for you. Twitter spaces will become a live video space in the future cap of fat. I'm going to say fact because it needs to if it wants to keep up with Discord. Because being able to, you know, chill inside of a space or chill inside of, you know, a Discord or whatnot with your homies and, you know, you can play games together. You can sit there and watch movies, uh, have bots for music. You can have that thing turned up like the club, you know. And so, I mean, I think if Twitter Spaces want to wants to keep up, that's what they're going to need to do. Yeah, facts. Yeah, so I also just want to thank you for coming out again and rocking with us tonight. Are there any final words for the listeners? How can they reach you? Yeah, most definitely. You can uh you can reach me at the Obu Turns on Twitter. Um, I have another Twitter account called at Turntman Jimmy as well. That's why I'm gonna start using for like some layer one adventures I'm gonna be working with. Um, as well as that, inside my um Obu Turns, I have a Discord. The links inside the bio. You can come join the Discord. I'm gonna be hosting my first Rumbles tomorrow at 6 p.m. And um, and uh, yeah, right now what we're working on is um, I'm I'm gonna drop an addition piece uh this weekend. And after I drop that, it's probably going to be a minute before I mint again. I'm actually going to be working with my team down there, Don Pedro, EMP, the artist, Young Shots, and Turnt Wife Lady, to go ahead and get our educational venture and our, on our community onboarding adventures, you know, going and get that running smooth and also get them set up with their own individual collections and their individual projects also. So I'm going to be taking me a little step back and getting them ready, and then I'll be back in a few months. Man, well, there you have it, man. Turnt Man, Jimmy. Coming up here on the Neighborhood Talk Show, talking everything Web3, everything crypto, everything NFT, man. We really appreciate you sharing your knowledge about this space, blockchain, te blockchain technology here, man. We appreciate you. But y'all already know how we get down here on Neighborhood Talk. We're right back at it. This coming Tuesday, we got our dog Soul Mining Punk coming to talk to us. Everything about cybersecurity and how it ties into Web3. I'm telling you, you literally don't want to miss this episode. We're coming strong. We're talking about things that matter in this space and in this technology. And then, you know, we do the littlest thing. We're hopping right from here. We're going straight to our Discord. We are literally about to watch a movie together. That's what we do. We're a community. We're a neighborhood. 
neighborhood tales. We're about to watch Boys in the Hood. All you need to do is hop over to our Twitter page, click the link in our bio. Literally, you'll be able to join our Discord from there and come chill and hang with us. Come chill, come do all of that. We're about to turn up, watch Boys in the Hood like we would if we was on the couch. It's about to go down over in our Discord. Look forward to giving away the latest and biggest cash giveaways, $100,000 of cash prizes from the Neighborhood Tales Project. This is real money. This is real things. We're doing big things. And uh, all you need to do, again, is be a part of our Discord. Hop over to our Twitter page. Click that link. Hop it into our Discord for all of the latest and exclusive updates. Hey, y'all, y'all can find me, your boy J.D. Jones, everywhere at Official J.D. Jones. Mocha, as always, it's a pleasure sharing this space with you. Neighborhood Talk, Neighborhood Tales. Let's go. Love it. Uh, and also, I want to thank the listeners for coming out and enjoying episode 25 of our Neighborhood Talks. Um, again, you can find us on Twitter at NH Tales and Neighborhood Tales um, is our other on IG, TikTok, Discord, LinkedIn, Facebook, and you can catch all of our recordings at YouTube. And you can also find me on Twitter and IG at Mocha on the Block. It's been a pleasure, y'all. And until next time. It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood.